Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. Mark Twain said, there are lies, damn lies, and statistics. Taking that one step further, there are lies, damn lies, and climate science. There was a Christmas Eve article in USA Today from climate scientists claiming they got everything right. When it comes to climate change, should we accurately predict in 2000 what would be happening now? Overall, we're running quite close to the projections made in 2000 for carbon dioxide concentration, global temperature, and sea level, Henson said. Henson is Bob Henson from the website Weather Underground. First, let's look at the forecast for carbon dioxide. This is NOAA's carbon dioxide graph going back to the year 1960. It shows a nice, smooth, exponentially increasing curve. The future behavior of carbon dioxide is extremely easy to predict. Any child could have made the same prediction. It required exactly zero expertise to get that prediction correct. And it's the same story with sea level. This is NOAA's sea level graph for New York going back to the year 1850. As you can see, sea level has been rising at the same rate since before Abraham Lincoln was president. It's a straight line, and once again, any child would have made the same prediction. That prediction required exactly zero expertise and probably isn't worth billions of dollars in government research grants. And here is the NOAA sea level graph from Stockholm, Sweden. It shows sea level falling at a constant rate over the past 130 years. If sea level rise was accelerating as the experts predicted, we would see an upwards curvature towards the end of this graph. But none of the NOAA tide gauges with a long-term record show an upwards curvature. This tells us that sea level rise is not accelerating. Temperature is a little bit more interesting. This is the 2016 graph from remote sensing systems. They're one of two groups who measures temperatures in the Earth's troposphere via satellites. The yellow band represents climate model projections. And the blue band shows the actual temperatures measured from satellites. And they said, note that after 1998, the observations are likely to be below the simulated values, indicating that the simulation as a whole are predicting too much warming. This is the exact opposite of what Bob Henson from Weather Underground claimed. Around this time, Ted Cruz used a graph from remote sensing systems in a Senate hearing. His point was to show that there had been no warming over the past 20 years. As soon as he did this, I predicted that remote sensing systems would be pressured into changing their data. I put this on my blog on March 27, 2015. Look for the satellite data to be adjusted to bring it into compliance with the fully fraudulent surface temperatures. The Guardian is now working to discredit the University of Alabama at Huntsville, so it seems likely that remote sensing systems will soon be making big changes to match the needs of the climate mafia bookmark this post. And I use this animated GIF to show how the past would be cooled and the present would be warmed up. Well, I got that forecast exactly right. About a year later, remote sensing systems did exactly what I said they would. They changed their data. It still doesn't look very good, but they moved the measured temperatures in black barely up inside the band of yellow predictions. This graph overlays the new graph on top of the old one. The new graph is the black line, and the old graph was the blue band. What they did was they moved the temperatures in black up to the very high end of their blue error interval. This is something no serious scientist would ever do, but in climate science, it's standard operating procedure when the climate mafia comes calling. But even after the data tampering, the temperatures are at the very low end of the climate model predictions. The temperature forecasts were tremendous fails at quite a few different levels. And let's look at one more fail from the USA Today article. They say forests and vegetation are getting drier. This is the exact opposite of what NASA says. NASA says that carbon dioxide fertilization is making Earth greener. This is exactly what you would expect to happen. Commercial greenhouses pump up the level of carbon dioxide in order to make the plants grow faster and be more drought resistant. Summarizing the USA Today article and the claims from Bob Hansen were 100% fake news. All of the predictions made 20 years ago were either trivial or they were incorrect. There are billions of dollars of government research money at stake for maintaining climate alarm. This leads to very aggressive and dishonest behavior by climate scientists. 
And one more thing, Weather Underground was named after Bill Ayers' terrorist group from the 1960s. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.